Uh, good morning here from the West Coast and good afternoon to those of you on the East and uh, whatever time it is that you're tuning in from. Um, my name is uh, Ariel Felton. I am the president of the Pacific Sami CRV here in Seattle. And um, we are very excited to be uh, presenting this film festival with the National Nordic Museum and Scandinavia House and the Sami Film Institute. Um, I do want to acknowledge that we are uh, on indigenous land um, in New York, that's the Canarsie and the Manasee Lenape. In uh, Seattle, it's the Suquamish, Stiligwamish, Duwamish, and Coast Salish. And I also want to acknowledge the indigenous people from wherever you are. If you don't know who they are, you can go to native-land.ca and um, put in your information and it will tell you about it. The Pacific Sami CRV is um, uh, based here in Seattle and we've been uh, an organization um, for not quite a decade now. Um, our mission is to honor, cultivate, and expand understanding of Sami culture, uh, as well as heritage and contemporary issues. Um, and we are very happy to have been uh, part of the launch of this International Film Festival, now in its third year. Welcome. Thank you, Ariel, and thank you, Pacific Sami CRV. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are tuning in from. My name is Dina Cowan. I am the Programs Manager at the National Nordic Museum in Seattle, and it is my great pleasure to also welcome you to the third annual Sami Film Festival this year, of course, in a virtual format. Uh, we are very happy to co-present this festival with Scandinavia House in New York in partnership with the Pacific Sami CRV. The Sami Film Festival was born of, uh, out of the Nordic Lights Film Festival in 2018 and has been held at the National Nordic Museum for the past two years. As far as we know, it's the only Sami Film Festival outside of Europe. And um, uh, we see this Sami Film Festival as an opportunity to offer our audiences films that would otherwise not be easily accessible by filmmakers who tell stories that would otherwise not be told. We miss watching these films together, but are grateful that we can share them with you in a virtual format and gather uh, virtually today for a unique opportunity to hear from some of these filmmakers themselves. We want to thank our sponsors, the Swedish, Norwegian, and Finnish consulates in New York, as well as the Finnish embassy. We really appreciate, appreciate your support. And now uh, it is my honor to kick this off by introducing our um, uh, moderator, Amanda Dockstader. Amanda Dockstader is Barbara Osher Endowed Chair of Swedish Studies at the University of Washington in the Scandinavian Studies Department. Uh, her current book uh, project focuses on the Danish film director, Carl B. Dreyer. And she has published on representations of ethnicity and contemporary Swedish cinema, cinematic representations of childhood and the family in the Nordic welfare state, and issues of class, race, and ethnicity in a globalizing Sweden. Her research interests also include melodrama theory, performance and translation studies, issues surrounding gender and representation, design thinking, and public facing scholarship in the humanities. Thank you so much, Amanda, and I'm going to let you take it from here to uh, introduce our um, uh, panelists. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stina, and it's it's a great pleasure and honor to um, now be here to introduce our amazing panelists and filmmakers and creative um, workers. And so I'll just go ahead and, and start doing that, and then after I give a brief introduction of everybody who's participating, then they'll have a chance to go around on their own and talk a little bit more about their work. So um, our first panelist is Ella Sofisaria, and she's a choreographer and a director based in Guatiguaino. And she works at the interlaces of video art, filmmaking, dance, and theater. In her works, she regularly sheds light on the social, political, and cultural peculiarities and challenges of the Sami people. We also have with us Rebecca, Rebecca King, 
who's a filmmaker and director who's recently created film projects under lockdown in London as part of a mini series called Home Sweet Home, which was initiated by the International Sami Film Institute. Her work has also been featured in the Aesthetica Film Festival, where they included her in a 10 female filmmakers to watch for Primetime Network. And she's also part of the BFI Network and BAFTA crew cohort. We also have, um, we also welcome Celia Sombi. And Celia Sombi is a director who graduated from in a university in Norway. And she directs short films as well as educational documentaries. Additionally, she also conducts film workshops and has worked in dubbing animation films. Uh, You'll have to correct me if I got that if, if I got that wrong. But um, she is also active within the film political fields and has worked with film programming in various festivals. And currently, she's working on several different projects, including short films for children. We also welcome Anna Magiv, sorry, Anna Magiv Vigelius, um, who's a writer, producer, and actor in a home truth. Uh, she discovered her passion for acting by playing a part in the feature film Kautokaino Rebellion, which was directed by Niels Gaup. She studied acting at Nord University and has worked with French director Philippe Gentil. She toured around the world for three years. She landed roles in a role in the Norwegian Nordic Noir TV series Monster. She currently lives and works in London, and she's working on two feature film projects. Um, we also have with us uh, Troy Storfjell. And Troy Storfjell specializes in Sami and indigenous studies, and his work is largely guided by critical indigenous approaches and methodologies. Troy teaches in Norwegian and Nordic studies, as well as Native American indigenous studies, environmental studies, global studies, gender and sexuality and race studies at Pacific Lutheran University. In his scholarship, he works to create a place for indigenous intellectual and philosophical traditions within the academy, bringing indigenous centered ways of knowing to bear on such topics as settler colonial literature, multicultural diversity and trans indigenous film studies. So welcome everyone. And um, perhaps we can just go around and in the same order in which I introduced you. And you can talk a little bit about the film that you have in the film festival and what you're currently working on and your, anything you'd like to add about um, in by way of introduction. So perhaps Ellis Sophie, would you like to start us off? Yes, let me unmute myself. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you for the invitation. It's uh, very nice to be here. And thank you also for uh, acknowledging the land. I really wish we had that tradition also here in Satni. Uh, I made this film Ribadit, Pulling in the Belt, um, which is kind of a documentary, but with a lot of uh, <laughs> my own interpretation. Um, um, and this project or this film started because I many years ago made a performance where I interviewed elderly Sami about move, movement traditions here in Sápmi. And um, this pulling in the belt was one of them that I didn't know from before, but uh, I, I kind of felt that I didn't get finished with it in the performance, but I wanted to also so uh, interview uh, more elders and make this film to, to um, uh, so that the tradition will be uh, known for more people, also the Sami people. Thank you. Um, perhaps Rebecca, you'd like to continue? Yes, uh, my name is Rebecca and I'm a filmmaker in London. I um, lived with Anna Maga during lockdown uh, here in Britain, which was an interesting time, I think, for many parts of the world. And um, we worked together on A Home Truth, which is part of the programme. And um, it's been such a, I really respect so much of the, the films that's part of this programme. It's been a, a real joy to see the, the perspectives and um, yeah with us we 
uh, Anna presented this poem that she'd written uh, linked to her um, journey as a young Sami woman now living in the city of London and assimilate into a new culture and finding that still parts of Sami bleed through um, the walls of our home. <laughs> and we tried to encapsulate that in how we did the film. Uh, so that was a really good journey. Um, so yeah, it's a joy to be here. Lovely. Perhaps we could follow up with Enemaga um, about the same project. Yeah, hello, Boris Boirek Boiridit. Uh, my name is Anna Magga Vigelius. Uh, I am uh, from Norway, uh, but I'm living in London and I lived with uh, the director, Rebecca King. And together we made A Home Truth, which, which is um, uh, part of this project uh, program. And um, yeah, it was an interesting and good um collaboration between the two of us it was the film came about as a question of how, how do I relate being an urban like modern woman but having this ancestry or like this indigenous background and how do I merge the two and like there's always this question of of uh, did you t make the right choice uh when you decided to pursue something or that's how I felt so it was a a personal journey and I wrote a poem and um, together we decided to then do it and I was the producer and writer and actor in the film like you can see on the program. That's wonderful thank you and uh, Celia would you like to continue? Yes um, I also would like to thank you so much for inviting me to to this occasion and uh, I'm very happy that there is a Sami film festival outside of Europe. I think that's uh, really a, a, a great thing. Uh, and I'm very excited to participate with Ayla and Ahku, uh, Ayla and her grandmother. It's, uh, it's been a few years since I made it. Uh, and it was a part of a, 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 a series called Seven Sami Stories. Uh, that has also been touring uh, big parts um, of the world. And uh, I can just echo what Elisov was saying, that uh, um, what, what, what was important with that film was to show a bit uh, of the traditions. And of those of you who have seen the film, it's about these uh, herbal traditions that are kind of knowledge that is no longer so much known uh, in 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 sami in sami areas uh, and um, and it's been uh, yeah it was quite quite very interesting also to work with that story that has a twist to it uh, because i also believe in in film as a, as a very spiritual thing and uh, the and so many things, and I believe you're on the right track as a filmmaker. Once you, um, once you get things validated or things are coming back to you while you are working, and that definitely also happened with this film, where this story that I came up was also validated by one or some of the crew members who were there. I said, but I heard this story. I heard this story like long time ago. And uh, that was that was very intense. Um, other than that, I just wanted to briefly mention currently I'm working on <laughs> on developing a feature film for children. And I'm also working with a, another, uh, what can I say, a longer short film or a yeah, that also has this theme of the elders because two of the other shorts that I made, like Aila Nahko and also Bunki, they have these elder people that are very central to their story. And that's a, a theme that is very near and dear to my heart. And obviously I'm not finished with it yet. So yes, but I, I'll stop there. I could talk and talk, so. <laughs> We hope to have you talk and talk again. <laughs> um, Troy, would you like to talk a little bit about your work? 
Sure. Uh, thank you. I would also like to, to echo th thanks. I'm really thankful for being invited to be part of this panel. I don't make films. So uh, it's a little exciting for me to be here with people who do. Um, I also want to acknowledge the uh, Puyallup uh, nation on whose traditional lands I live and the uh, Nisqually and Stelecom and Puyallup peoples on whose traditional lands I work at Pacific Lutheran University, uh, where I'm a professor in uh, Nordic studies and uh, Native American and indigenous studies. Um, and so uh, I have worked on, on Nordic literature and on uh, settler, settler, uh, settler colonial studies, studying settler literature and depictions of the Sami in Norwegian and Swedish literature, for example. But uh, more recently, I've been working with trans indigenous, uh, uh, doing tra trans indigenous work, which is uh, applying different indigenous perspectives to, wor to work done from by other indigenous peoples of other nations and working on uh, Sami film in particular, looking at uh, film criticism using, using Sami aesthetics uh, of Sami films. Uh, right now I'm working on, uh, on several articles and, and, and on a book and I'm working. And so, and I've actually taught uh, uh, Celia's film in, in my class and the students love your film, by the way. So it's, it's one of their favorites. Um, and I'm also working in another vein on a, on a collaborative book with a, with a uh, Clinkett scholar, Kasky uh, Russell, uh, on uh, indigenous uh, football or indigenous soccer, which is uh, a little bit of a different topic, but also a fun one. Thank you. Lovely. I wonder if, um, if I could just follow up on something that you mentioned, Troy, and sort of throw it out to the panel. You mentioned that um, you're interested or working on a Sami aesthetics, a Sami film aesthetics, and I'm curious what that means or what that might mean to your work, to the panelists, to the filmmakers, to anyone who would like to answer that question. What, what would that mean to you? Well, I'll start by saying what I'm doing, but I really want to hear what the, what the directors uh, have, think about this too. Um, but I, I'm looking at, uh, I started with work, I did some work on the, on the short film, uh, by Elamaya Tailfeathers, and then on the feature film, uh, Sami, uh, Sami Blood. Um, and and in, in working with these, I'm looking at, um, I was looking at uh, several concepts, uh, this, this uh, inherited uh, place-based or land-based knowledge that we work with. Uh, also the the, the 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 communicating with each other, but also with the, with the emphasis on listening. Um, and then and then um, uh, there's a there's a South Sami term, um, which means that which is which is beautiful and eth practical or pragmatic and ethically made, and it's one and the same thing. That that aesthetics and ethics and practicality are not separate. They're 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 the same thing. And uh, how can how can we bring these things, for example, into looking at film, into writing about film, talking about film, into, and, and into the ways we view film? But I'm also very very indebted to other in, indigenous scholars working with film, particularly uh, Michelle Raheja, who's Seneca, and her, and her book of uh, Visual Sovereignty on film is, uh, and, and she says, and I see this with the films here. She says film is a is a better medium, perhaps, than literature for conveying indigenous storytelling. And I, I think I saw, uh, you know, I, I'm better is, I, I don't need to get into comparisons, but it's certainly a very good medium for conveying indigenous storytelling. Would any of the other panelists like to respond to if, if when you're working with creating a story or imagining a project, like do you imagine a particular aesthetic or is there a, is there, um, does the story come first or is there an image or how do you, how does this work into, into a process? And can you imagine something like a, a Sami film aesthetic? Hi. Um, I don't think that this has maybe is aesthetic is the, what I'm going to answer right now, but um, uh, when I've been working with the, the Ribalit pulling in the belt, um, I've been um, working with this body knowledge or like um, we call it immaterial kunskap or it's um, experienced knowledge uh, um, because um, um, when I have been like 
when I was younger, <laughs> I kind of felt that I haven't inherited anything. I haven't, there is not any like treasures or any gaktis that we have from elder days. Like they're all after the war, second world war. Um, but um, then I have been thinking that, um, that, we, that there is very much knowledge in the bodies that you don't see. Also, um, many elderly people that I know, they don't, uh, they don't communicate it. So um, obviously kind of, it's just very inside. Uh, also because of many reasons, obviously, but uh, I think the, for, for uh, many of the last films that I made, it's, it's very much about this body knowledge and this kind of knowledge that you don't see from the outside but uh, when you ask more specifically about dance or movement then they actually know in their bodies yeah would Celia would you like to talk about your process of of creating films yeah, it's very interesting to look into this uh, film aesthetics that's, that uh, Troy is now uh, diving into. And please enlighten us <laughs> once you come up with results, <laughs> because it's uh, uh, it is as as you're making films, you know, it's as Elisov also says, you're not always maybe so aware always of what is going on, but. Uh, as we go along, you 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 get more confirmations, and yeah, you 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 start to feel you're on the right way. And uh, and I mentioned earlier, you know, I, I believe very much in film. As a, I think it's a very spiritual thing, and, and uh, you know, you have the what can I say, the guides with you or the ancestors with you, even when when things start moving well and. Uh, uh, and the outcomes become in in certain ways. There are so many stories about it and so many other Sami filmmakers have also talked about it. But I thought it was very interesting what Elisov was also talking about this intangible cultural heritage and uh, also this body memories. Uh, but also once I was there, uh, I think it, I was at Imaginative and I was talking with some some uh, some people, some audience there, and I was telling about that sometimes even your, you, you yourself, you can remember something uh, that you didn't even know what was there uh, that came. And then, then she told me about this concept of uh, blood memory that I've heard uh, that, the, that the Native uh, Americans have, uh, uh, that, that you can remember something that, that you maybe didn't learn directly from a grandmother or a grandfather, but that has come, that has come to you, and that uh, that was extremely fascinating for me, and also for me as a filmmaker, because this is what I, I, I've, I've at least in me, in my films, what I like to investigate and explore much more of is like the spiritual side and more the mystical side that uh, we have in in our our. Uh, in, in our traditions, because we have so much, uh, so, so much various and very different kind, and it's, it, and it's very many times also very natural part of our our uh, our lives. Yeah, I'll stop there for now. <laughs> Lovely, thank you, Anna Maga. Would you like to talk about your process? I know that either you or Rebecca mentioned a poem. Did it? Did your film start with a poem? Yeah, hi. So yes, um, I, it did start with a poem and the poem came about from this project that the International Sami Film Institute made in this theme called Home Sweet Home. So you, you, were, you could receive funding to make a little short film about the current, um, situation the COVID uh, and so the poem came as a result of that um, pr 
project funding. And then I started thinking about um, like uh, me as a Sami living in London, like how um, I should be writing about how like I miss going home and like how like I'm here in London in lockdown and like, but then that didn't, like when I started talking about that and I mentioned it to Rebecca as well, like oh, there's this uh, project um, that we can participate in, I need a director. And I st slowly started to just tell her about the poem and, you know, give her some like seeds of inspiration that <laughs> she could run away with or run wild with. Um, but yeah, it did come uh, from the poem. And there was also very technical reasons why there was a poem because we were a three person crew and uh, we were locked down in lockdown together uh, in the house. So the house was like our set, our like preparation on our everything. Uh, so it was beneficial for us to use like a narrative recording uh, instead of a live recording uh, on the set because like the sound is such an important part of any movie and brings its own challenges if you don't have the right equipment, the right amount uh amount of people as well so yeah that's how it started from our side and maybe rebecca wants to add something to that yeah first of all i love what you said uh elisophy about um knowledge of the body because that was the foundation for a home truth of i don't in the same way have a sami perspective uh, but li uh, living with Anna and listening to where she was coming from, the biggest thing also as a person living in London City, as many people can um, identify with, is the transition of, like Anna's particular story is transitioning from Sami to London City and how the process of that can be a really... Um, I don't know, a strange transition where different parts of you can move at the same time, like physically you transition to London, but emotionally and psychologically, there's parts of Sami that's still <laughs> here, you know? Um, even though physically Sami's far away, emotionally and psychologically, it was very like much a part of her dialogue and how, how she thinks and how she acts. We were trapped in a field of bulls two weeks ago and she was like yoking <laughs> in front of them. And um, I think that was where we were coming from of being interested in how there's a confidence in preserving and protecting a culture that's beautiful and there's a confidence in rejecting and I can empathize with that rejecting and reinventing yourself there's a confidence in that but Anna's particular journey was more nuanced of how do you um, assimilate to a different culture but still really value the one you came from how do you merge them and bring something new like her yoiking she didn't want in a home truth because she was like, that is not yoiking. And the Sami police are gonna knock on the door and go, that, that is not yoiking. But um, I found that beautiful because it was a, a, a morphed way that she's, uh, she's transitioned from Sami to London. And that's interesting. That's still a Sami story in, uh, in my eyes and an objective eyes. We have a really a nice follow up question in the chat here that I'll bring in and then sort of problematize a little bit. Um, uh, uh, Dennis writes, I noticed a predominance of the world of nature and silences in your film, um, very different from American film. And would you say this reflects Sami culture? And I'll just add to that, like it was really interesting, um, um, Animaga, to hear you talk about the voiceover and then the necessity of like needing to film in a kind of silence because he, because of the technological, and then um, uh, the technological constraints of making a film under lockdown. And then Ella Sophie, I, I would really be curious to hear more about your use of sound in your film and that because it strikes me that this music was so powerful um, and and such an interesting choice. It was like a Francoise Adi French 
something from the 60s, right? So I'd love to hear more about um, just your response to this idea of nature, silences, voiceover, sound, music, choices in your, in your, in your film. Who goes first? <laughs> um, yes, I can talk about choices in sound in this film. Um, well, I think we just uh, in the editing process with Andreas Oslan, who was also the photographer. Um, we wanted to be very playful uh, with this uh, and not because it, it's a very weird tradition, you know, <laughs> and also like flirting and this kind of stuff. It's so uh, awkward. <laughs> it is very, uh, yeah, awkward. So we, we wanted to play with it and uh, we found this uh, music and um, yeah, to make like a contrast because in this film they are dressed in in a traditional gakti uh, dress and um, yeah we wanted to play with the contrast and I think that that makes what they are doing even more strong and then in the end we have the yoik of Vimme, Sari and Tapanirin and um, yeah I, I'm really happy about <laughs> yeah I think it, it's it's playful I want to he, don't want to take words away from directors, but um, but I just want to point out that the, what this this question about the the nature and the silences this is something that that students in in my classes know notice very very soon when we when, with the first films is that there's a different pacing often than you get from 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 Hollywood films not always there are some some Sami directors who are uh, very fast paced films as well but it's a different rhythm and and I think that's one of the ways that film can be such a good medium in communicating. Um, different ways of perceiving the world uh, through through th in ways that are hard to to do in the written word, but you, with the, with the use of image and sound and pacing, with good editing, uh, it becomes really successful. So, yeah, I can echo that, uh, uh, Troy, and uh, uh, is what you said initially about literature and versus film. Of course, there's never a competition, but I think. Uh, Sami storytelling really resonates very well with filmmaking um, and uh, living images because so much of our oral storytelling is very visual and uh, and uh, yeah I, I, I feel like you have uh, uh, we have all these very powerful images sometimes that also that you can play with when you want to to make these films uh, with various themes, like also the whole, the whole mythical mythological realm that we have, is also very is very powerful and and and, and intense. Uh, and uh, just to uh, uh, answer to that nature in silence that you have noticed uh, uh, in in Sami films, well, that is who we are. <laughs> In, in 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 many senses of course it, we're not a very we're not homogen homo so very always a homogeneous group but the nature is very dominant in most of sami lives and also the need to maybe be in silence and because when you're in nature silence is is following but of course we're also very there's also a big vari variety of personalities and lived experiences among uh, Sami peoples as well but uh, but uh, it, it kind of it, it's not wrong to say that this is a reflection of, of a Sami culture. I was struck also Celia in your film about how the nature was very nature was very much not silent like the the river was speaking right the, the river is speaking today or the so um, yeah, it was beautiful, and that's it. Sort of speaks to another um, um, 
thought in the chat that there's sort of a mystical, and you've, you've spoken to this as well, that there's a spiritual aspect to this filmmaking and, and that comes through in your film very clearly. There's another question in the chat um, about, oh, oh, sorry, Anna Maga. Yeah, I was just, uh, if I may, uh, wanted to add to that, like, because the question of the silence, and I think in, in my experience in the culture, we had this uh, very um, well-known poet, Neil Sasha Kwaokepa, and he had a poem where he was saying, I'm paraphrasing because I can't remember the poem in English, but it was something like, and when everything is past, you can't hear nothing, and that you can hear. So it's something about that there is a voice in the silence too, and that has its own like presence. And I also like, we're so used to that living like uh, up north, there's like the winter is isolating as well as giving different sounds. And I remember I was at the theater and I, we had um, um, an actor from down south coming up north and he was saying that it was so challenging. The one thing that was so challenging was the fact that it was so silent up north. So you have like this, I think in South, the people in the cities are maybe used to having that friend of the sound or like having that train that uh, goes past the window or like cars and things like that. And for me personally, like there is a friend in the silence because that is where you get to know yourself as well and i think that is interesting to to try and integrate in the films as well Celia, did you have something to yeah add? i just wanted to br briefly remark that even the norwegian prime minister uh, anna solberg now we can disagree or agree with her in many things, but in one conference that I, I listened to, then she was actually selling the North as a paradise of silence, uh, you know, a place where people can come and enjoy silence, which is not very much possible in many places of the world. Now, if her politics are friendly to that fact, that that's another discussion, but I just, I'll, I just wanted to mention it. <laughs> We had a question in the in the chat about um, is anyone working on films about Sami experience before and during World War II? Is there anything distinctive about this history? And I wonder, I, I'll like maybe expand that to say like to what degree is sort of personal history important to you in your filmmaking or to what sense do you feel um, um, compelled to sort of represent a history of, of people or peoples or maybe um, perhaps you could speak to that in your filmmaking process? Yeah, definitely. World War II is, of course, a very, uh, a very important subject uh, to, um, to, to the Sami conscious and the Sami history. Uh, but from my side, I've been looking at some stories from it and I have I think as I believe very many have like these experiences or these stories from our grandfathers grandmothers uh, uh, generations that have been that have been talking about this uh, World War II experience but I think uh, uh, but uh, because World War Two is maybe that, that's like a, a trauma situation because it was the world. But I think another trauma that I've been have been much more interest, interested to look into is like this uh, uh, this assimilation process that has that was such a long story and uh, that lasted for such a long time. It lasted for hundred and over 150 years and it's like an ongoing thing which is where we're still experiencing the the effects of of the assimilation process even though it's officially been abolished but some of the me mechanisms are very much still alive uh, today in, in various contexts and that is something that i've been thinking about i would have wanted to to look closer into m more than maybe World War II and not to undermine any effects of World War II to, to our people and to, 
this part of the world because it's not it's it's quite Finnmark was subject to a very brutal um, uh, treat, treatment of of during World War Two where they burned down the the um, the whole the most of yeah the almost like over 90% of the county was burned down, including northern 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 Troms. Uh, there's there's another film that looks more close to more into that that is familiar built by Yvonne Thomasen, which is a very brilliant documentary about where where she, where, she, uh, where she's reflecting upon the consequences to the Sami culture uh, by by this burning of of Finnmark and. Uh, uh, and which which was actually just kind of enforcing and emphasizing and speeding up the assimilation process. That is like the bigger picture of it. Yeah, but I'll stop. I'll let others also talk, talk about this. I think this this is a very prominent narrative in the film, the in Kaiser's Enchanted Forest as well, treats this experience of World War II and trauma. Would anyone else like to talk about the idea of, of dealing with a historical past in your filmmaking in one way or another, or um, the traumas of, of forced integration? Yeah, I can. Um, um, I haven't uh, worked with, with historical issues also maybe because i have until now worked with very small films and very small budgets and um but i have uh, been interested in in knowledge in that way to to have knowledge from people who are who have experienced something that it is an experienced knowledge because also many like historical documents or is yeah is also colonistic or how you say so it's um it's not from a sami person uh, necessarily that it's it's written by but i have been very interested to to get that experience knowledge of 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 something that i made films from that it's um it's like a first hand um information but uh, i think definitely that there should be films about second world war or after because it's it's very much have happened there and i i know in norway at least that all the second world war films are very much about men who have done something erotical uh, they they keep coming almost every year and i i very uh, <laughs> sick of it now so I hope uh, some will make film about it soon um, I can follow up another question that was in the the chat um, and and sort of following up with several of you mentioned in your bio the bios that I received um, in preparation for today about um, working with sort of intersections with politics and film in various ways. And maybe this question in the chat about, um, can you talk about Sami filmmakers engagement of environmental issues like extraction and rights of nature and how that's growing worldwide or in your work, or just maybe speak more generally about how you see your work being political or not being political or participating in some kind of politics. Um, well, I can just, um, I once talked with a very young Aboriginal, she was maybe a young person young uh, at, at a youth conference uh, she, she was an ind indigenous from australia and what she said she was very re some of the words she said is uh, is something that i carry with me all along you know up to this date and there's so much truth to it and uh, and what she said is that 
whatever she does, that even her existence is a political statement. Uh, and uh, that kind of kind it will always maybe reflect some of the film, most of the films that that even to be able to make this film and to make these statements, to have shared these memories or whatever, it, it will always be have a political aspect to it because our existence is political. Uh, but then diving into these more uh, questions about politics is, I, I've been around for quite some time in, in some film making and, uh, uh, and uh, we were also encouraged to talk maybe a little bit about ESFE, the International Sami Film Institute, as we were initiating or as we were preparing for this <laughs> panel discussion. And I can just uh, say that uh, the, the, the beginning of uh, uh, the, that we have the International Sami Film Institute day, today is uh, is like a turning point for Sami filmmaking because, because if we didn't have it, we wouldn't have this boom of Sami filmmakers. Sami filmmakers wouldn't have had those possibilities. When when Sami Film Center was started because it was, it was a film center before it became a Sami Film Institute, then I've been in trying to make fundings for films for like a decade or so and it was so incredibly difficult and it was so very much uh, impossible very 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 difficult to get fundings for for films and uh, and uh, of course as a young filmmaker or aspiring filmmaker i wanted to really address all these very heavy political issues but it was quite clear that if you want to go get anywhere in near a camera and the possibility to get to be able to make these films then you had to think in a very in a, in, a, in another way that you couldn't be so political but uh, then of course with Sami Film Institute then that has made it possible but I think even filmmakers Sami young Sami filmmakers today who want to make films with with a very political point of view and a, and a political message fi will find it difficult to to find fundings uh, for for the films and that is a that is a that is a sad sad truth to it but then of course then we have very some very good examples that you can be very political <laughs> and still be successful like Amanda's film Samebud which is has a very strong political message although it's a personal story at the same time. So it's always this balance. Um, yeah, now others can fill in if they want. I would just like to briefly just echo uh, the, the first point that Celia made and point out how important it is for indigenous people in general and for the Sami specifically, just, be, just existing is political. And, uh, and not just from a Sami perspective, if you look at any Norwegian online newspaper, anytime there's an article that has anything to do with the Sami, you just look at the comments. It's, it's very, it's political for, for, for the non-Sami too, the, the Sami existence is political. So, so I think uh, the right to, to tell our own stories, the right to, to be ourselves is a political act, even if one is not trying to make a political film. Um, the, the, these, these, these lovely films that, that I got to watch for, for today that I hadn't seen before just, um, may not be saying I am championing this party or, or this political candidate, but they are political in, the, in that they're advocating for the continued existence of Sami life and culture. Yeah, I can also like continue on that track that um, uh, for films, the, the last ones I made, it's um, I'm kind of more diving into uh, some sort of Sami knowledge or uh, traditions. And I think that um, <laughs> that can also be read as politi political because the reason they are no longer practiced or they actually don't exist anymore is because of the colonization. But I am kind of lifting them up again and say, hey, do you remember this, that we actually used to do this or they used to talk about this in this way. Um, and I think that have been like important in 
all my film, but also my performing um, arts that um, I want to lift kind of the, the nice things or the beautiful things also to, to kind of give them um, empowerment or strength to, to see, oh, we have this, to kind of give this kind of, um, yeah, thing to, for people and myself. Yeah, I can just, uh, uh, just to continue where LSOF left, I was attending this, uh, we have been having some intense cultural days here in Satmi too this past week and where, where we were discussing, you know, about uh, Sami culture and Sami artists and how they're going to progress and uh, yeah, despite this difficult um, funding situation that very many face for various reasons. Uh, and then then there was this heartfelt, you know, kind of sigh, you could say from one of the artists who was saying, but when will we be able to make films for ourselves or to be artists for ourselves and not to be very depending on who that we have to be present something for 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 an for an outsider and uh, and, and, and I, I believe that my film Ayla and Ahko, which is here, is very much where I'm trying to make a film for the Sami audience primarily. But then, of course, hoping that also others can can resonate to it. It's, it's like Ella Sofa said about she's making with her own. She wants to highlight these traditions, and it was like my this film. I wanted to highlight the herbal tradition. That is a, a very much a, a, a lost tradition. Having said that, and I have to become a bit political, it's about what Troy was also saying about this self-determination, you know, that we have to have this, our, we have to get the possibility to, do, to define our own stories, to define which stories are going to be told. Because right now, if you want to make a feature film, uh, it is some people sitting in an office in Oslo who are going to decide whether you can be, whether you will be able to make a, a feature film or not. And what competence do they know? How will they look upon quality? Um, that is a whole big issue and that's a huge challenge at the moment. Uh, we've come a long way with Sami International Sami Film Institute, but, but we really, we need to move further and if we're going to have a like a very viable Sami film industry where people can actually live with Sami filmmaking at a uh, full time then when then we need to get this 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 bigger lift yes I had to come with a political statement here <laughs> um Anna Magad or Rebecca, did you have anything to add to the this, the discussion of this question? Uh, yeah, so I can like for my personally, like I find it such a, a tightrope balance of like where do I where am I curious? What do I want to investigate as Anna as an individual uh, and uh, I've like experienced a lot of like the explaining to the outside world what the Sami is about and like you become like this um, uh, ambassador for the whole of Sami people so so I like I remember like in in Norway I because I'm from north I have my northern accent and stuff so people know uh, that I'm I'm a Sami when I'm in Norway but when I moved to UK no one really knew uh, about my indigenous background and I could kind of hide in that and kind of have a freedom in uh, letting things seep through of what I found curious and what I found interesting and the Sami identity and culture uh, for me it's always there like uh, within me whether I want to or not and I just like Rebecca mentioned briefly about like we were in a field and there were these huge bulls like charging at us and it was dark it was evening and we were terrified and we were like five people there and and uh, feeling very scared and I was just like don't 
run. So I kept facing the balls and I started yoiking because that was so natural for me. <laughs> and the balls like uh, backed off and we could get off the field. And that came from me. My dad was telling stories to me when, um, when, in, when you're in like nature, like you yoik with the animals and he encountered a bee bear and he would yoik after the bear and the bear is very afraid of sound. And here we come back to like, what is like sound to us? And I think like the yoik is such a uh, big part of our identity and culture. And in the silence, we also use yoik or singing in the Sami way of like traditional singing as a way of accompanying us. But that like, for me, the political aspects, I, I find myself a little bit on the tightrope because I want to explore things that I found curious. And I, I what I thought about is so nice with Ella Sofes, for example, the Riba did, is like, she's very curious in, in, in investigating for her own like knowledge and, and you, using that uh, to dis like show something. And, instead of like, because my biggest fear as a filmmaker writer is the feeling of victimization as a son. And there is so much uh, like colonization that has happened and there has been so much um, trauma that has been caused to, to the Sami, the whole world Sami people. And um, it's, it's for me personally, uh, my fear is to be stuck in that. And if I am stuck in like a victimization and I try and create any Sami art from that place, I lose the curiosity that I want to explore as a filmmaker. So. Thank you. Um, there's a, a question in the chat, and I know that we're coming up on um, 12 o'clock Seattle time. Um, so Stina, you can flag us or Kyle flag us if we need to. I don't want to stop asking questions and hearing you talk about your work though. So I'm gonna persist until somebody cuts me off for a little bit more. Um, yes. There's a question, <laughs> question in the chat about, um, and, and this speaks to the fact that a lot of people watching are, are outside of you know, the Nordic region, outside of Sápmi. And so what kind of, how can Sami Americans or Sami in, in other places, how can, how can we help you tell your stories? Yes, I saw that question and I was so excited about it <laughs> because uh, I, um, we've been around as filmmakers uh, uh, here and there and yeah, or in very many occasions and uh, occasionally I met on some Native Americans and, uh, and they were telling me about, yeah, how they make, how they get fundings uh, uh, in, in, especially in maybe in, in the US. Um, not so much in Canada, maybe, but uh, but <laughs> and they were telling about this. Yeah, but but the way they do it is that they find these private donors, you know, these private funders, you know, that can uh, uh, help them with uh, with films. And I know, for instance, Neil Scope with his film uh, The Kotkeno Rebellion. He, I think he he had like this rich woman who has her roots from here in Finnmark. I, I'm, not, I'm not so sure if she has Sami ancestry or not. She might have Sami ancestry. Um, Tudi Josefsen is her name. And I think believe she was one of the funders for her film. So in that sense, if you know any, have a rich uncle there somewhere. <laughs> then please let us know that would that, that that's a that's a way to help it but of course any moral support or whatever the way that you are now like Troy is now looking into Sami film aesthetics and uh, you know all these things all all things contribute all things just to make the films visible like with the Sami film festival that's a great way of of also helping helping out and uh, 
to, 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 to create the spaces and the room for these films and to be seen is, is, is very good. And I can also see that somebody is asking about Amanda Kernel's film, if, if that is, if, 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 will, if it will create boost for Sami films. Definitely any success of any Sami filmmaker or even indigenous filmmaker is a success for the whole field of indigenous and Sami filmmakers. So uh, definitely Neil Scope was a, was a pathfinder in so many ways, not only with the film, but also as an indigenous film filmmaker, to my knowledge, is one of the first indigenous peoples to have directed a, a feature film. Uh, but now Amanda is coming and uh, her work is, and what is great with Amanda is, is also that she's very sharing of her knowledge. So she's not difficult to, I've been participating in multiple workshops with her and her knowledge is incredible the way that she can, in, in the craft itself, you know. Uh, and, and she can be so supportive of uh, other filmmakers, which I think is, is, is so, so great. So yeah, we're all very excited about Amanda's film charter to be nominated for the Oscars. And personally, I think Sami Blood should have been also nominated for the Oscars or been Sweden's contribution to the Oscars. Yes. Would any of the other panelists like to, to comment on that? How can Sami Americans help tell stories or tell stories abroad? Um, I'm not sure what, <laughs> what you kind of mean with that. I would lo love to see a Sami American uh, film. <laughs> that would be very uh, nice to see that perspective. So make a film and so we can learn from each other. Great. Um, I had one, unless Anna, did you, Anna, we, no. Um, uh, I had, so um, I was looking at the film or the website for the International Sami Film Institute last night. And there are a lot of projects involved, um, involving children or youth filmmakers it looked like and a lot of the films that you um, that were in the the uh, film festival featured intergenerational stories and particularly like young young women and young young um, people so I was just curious whether you might want to comment on what you see as the sort of future of yeah, do you see a new generation relating to um, identity in a different way or history in a different way because of film and what do you see the next generation so if you could sort of speculate on what the future of Sami cinema looks like what would that look like to you? Um, well I think that um, uh, it, it all depends on funding situations also in the future um, because we have to be able to build up a Sami film industry that is viable and if we have that then it's so much easier to recruit also younger people to, to the business. Right now as the industry is working now it's very few who can work uh, on, on a full time that it so it becomes like this part time uh, part time uh, thing where you are you're depending on getting your income maybe from other areas or sometimes you have to take a full-time job and then do this in, in your spare time which is the case for me uh, so but if we if we want to really get the younger people we have to get we have to get a better funding situation and a better possibility for the for the yeah, b better funding possibilities. And um, there are very many ways. And in that, again, you were asking about the Sami, the, the, the Sami people over there, that's, you know, if you have any ideas. Yeah, I have one idea. Yes, now that you're listening. Because we have this, um, now that I remember, I have to start to advertise. We have this satmifilm.com. Um, it is this website uh, where you can go in and uh, you can 
watch film. It's like a Sami Netflix in a way. So if you go and click there and become like a subscriber to that channel, then you can become a, like a, then you're s contributing to supporting Sami film because the income will go straight to the Sami filmmakers. And also it will help to create maybe the huger base we get of these subscribers, then actually maybe we can, then it can be maybe to start for something, uh, 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 something bigger. But uh, yeah, that, 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 that was yet another political speech for me. Now, now I give the floor to others. Yeah, I, I would love to say like if, regarding like recruiting like Sami children to like the film industry, like it is so important that also like the Sami children have someone to look up to and that they also can see that, hey, we can do this too. And that it doesn't become like this far fetched idea for them that it is something someone else does but like and i think that sami film international sami film institute does that so well um to integrate uh everyone everyone like with uh, an idea has the opportunity as a sami filmmaker to to apply for funding and because the environment is so little many more have the opportunity to try and I think uh, with the International Sami Film Institute, they, they give chances to people who in the big picture maybe wouldn't get the opportunity to tell their stories. So I think that is like um, a beautiful thing that comes as a part of what International Sami Film Institute does. Well, I'm getting a little bit of a signal from the that we need to pull everything to a close, but I it's been such a pleasure to hear you talk about your work and and I was I, it's a real honor to be able to watch your work and to to participate in this and I hope that there are, are many 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 more of these festivals to come that they just get bigger and bigger and bigger. So um with that uh Kyle, did you want to Hi, I'm Kyle from Scandinavia House in New York, and it is my great pleasure to thank everyone that participated in this panel and actually a great thank you to the Nordic Heritage Museum as well in Seattle to uh, allowing us to co present uh, this wonderful series. Uh, this is the first time for us to be a part of this series. Um, so uh, thank you so much to Stina. Uh, thank you so much to the panelists, the filmmakers for sharing your films. Uh, thank you to Troy and Amanda for your wonderful insight into Sami uh, filmmaking. Um, and again, I would like also to thank our sponsors, uh, the Consul General of no uh, Sweden uh, in New York, the Consul General of Finland in New York, and the Royal Norwegian Consul General of in New in New York as well, as well as the Embassy of Finland in Washington, DC. Um, we hope to continue uh, screening great films on, on both of our channels, uh, both at, out in Seattle and in New York. So please do follow our websites for everything that we have to offer. Um, if someone could write the Nordic Heritage Museum's website in the chat function, I'm sorry, I, I don't remember it off the top of my head, but Scandinavia House is scandinaviahouse.org. Um, um, yes, so thank you again to everyone and we hope to see everyone again in the future. Bye.